my turn it's been a little while to intro this thing uh and the way this works is uh we show up you show up also moves a topic we talk about it for 30 minutes well we talk about it for about eight minutes for that 30 minutes it's been 22 minutes bullshitting uh and then we discover that we had no idea what it was and then we uh cavort and laugh and answer questions and see you next week glad you're here we're on the internet if you found this you can find the rest of us Uh, yeah, questions can be sent to us via Twitter or uh, through the website. Uh, there's a contact form on the website. You can go to binaryjazz.us, click on contact. And we need questions. Please ask us silly questions. Oh, I have questions. Uh, I will also, I'll also take this opportunity to plug our slash my new bot that has graced the internet uh, as of, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. It's called this or that bot, <laughs> and it uh, it it is based on a a game show that was on uh, a friend of I think all of us uh, maybe most of us who had a podcast for a while called Dave's World, and they had a game show on Dave's World called This or That, where the object of the game was to guess this or that, and the answer is always wrong. So I made a bot that. Uh, plays that game and you can play along too. just uh answer every day this this or that bot will ask this or that and then you answer you send your answer you say the answer is this or the answer is that uh and, or you could say answer colon this or answer colon that uh and uh and it'll tell you you're wrong for those times when you need to be told that you're wrong um, is there, let me ask there, you the there are a couple there's a couple other things that it can tell you uh oh. those are like easter eggs um i'll let you figure that stuff out on your own as you get more and more frustrated about losing uh the game is there it uh well never mind is the source code public uh it's uh it's on cheap bots done quick uh which i think means sort of it sounds yeah. so dirty <laughs> <laughs> Like you That's can, you can Stevie find it. You can, Jesus. you can find it on cheap bots done quick, uh, and you can find the logic for the normal this or that. But it doesn't, it doesn't expose the reply logic. I don't think. Mm. <laughs> There's too many verbs happening. Of like, mm. done quick, expose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a seedy underworld of bots. <laughs> yeah. And if and if you want to make your own bot, uh, cheap bots and quick is a good way to do it, uh, because um, it's it's what? just a JSON array, uh, and you just tell it what you want it to say or do and whatever. Really? Yeah. And this is on the internet. <laughs> it is on the internet. Oh wow! I see this on the website. Yeah. And you can do a lot of really interesting, like complex stuff with it. Um, my favorite thing, my favorite bot that, that uses cheap bots done quick is um, the uh, uh, patron saint, uh, the the daily uh, saint of uh, the feast of the feast day of, um, mm -hmm. which uh, which gives you a patron saint every day that is uh, randomly generated through a bunch of variety of various different uh, things that it can be a patron saint of. Uh, and it tells you what what today uh, today's patron saint is, uh, what they're wearing, what they like to do, and, and what they're holding, because these are things that are important. And then you can reply back to the the patron saint bot, and it will tell you something else. It's pretty neat. Um, we're um, so I'm looking at this. Never mind. I, I'll get distracted later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated that you can just provide like Jason, right? Uh huh. But my question is, and obviously the answer is uh, yes, because of the patron saint bot. Um, yeah, uh, can, you can dynamically then generate that, and uh, cheap bots done quick will reference your dynamic J. Oh God, this is a disaster. Yeah, yeah. 
It's it's amazing. It's so oh, great. So, so it sucks. this or that bot is really, really simple as compared to the things that you can do. Like I, I, I gave it very specific uh, things that you could ask it and, and I don't know regex very well. So I just like, just Who does very specific, <laughs> very specific things that, that Gary. Um, but um, Gary does. But uh, yeah, if you did know regex, if you knew, uh, if you're awesome at JSON, if if you, uh, there's a lot of things you can do, and and then that's and you can do like you can put in placeholders for like dynamically generated uh, strings and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're literally just hosting a static file in your case. I'm not even hosting it. Cheapbot's done quick is hosting it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wrote it. So, okay. Well, today's topic. Today's topic. <laughs> Not cheap bot stuff. Today's but, topic is But you can go and follow this <laughs> bad bot on Twitter and and play along. Can I tell you No, I can't. Can you? No. I the answer's probably this. Or that. The I uh <laughs> I used to have this site called haikufish.com a hundred years ago. I believe you you've told yeah, I believe you've shared. Yeah. That. And I had a hankering two days ago to write haikus again because I think the opening haiku I wrote on the site was something about haikus or dumb art. Um, and I find it satisfying right now to write dumb art. So I wrote out several haikus and threw them all away promptly. Um, but now I sort of want to fiddle with things like, you know, at that stage of my career, like, hey, we captured a form and it's a haiku, or allegedly. I feel like I can do better now and like count syllables and you know that sort of thing and um, anyway there's a nugget so, there and I'm sure you'll you'll figure it out by the end of the day of what you're gonna do with it <laughs> well so naturally my inclination was like let's do this in a technology that I haven't worked with in years uh, and um, and go from there so yeah I mean that like this or that bot like smarter than so so that podcast has been not on the not going for i don't know three years four years maybe a long time but like early on in the podcast i was like i need to write a bot that does this game and i made an account i made a twitter account and then i sat on it for the intervening four years as i figured out how i'm gonna write a bot so you like then, to play the long game yeah yeah <laughs> So then I, I learned about cheap bots done quick. And I was like, that's a good thing I could do eventually. And then another year or maybe two went by and then I finally did it because I was really bored and didn't want to do work. And probably because of the coronavirus. But isn't it great how it's like causing this new type of creativity. And sometimes for people who don't, consider them I think what the for the people who don't consider themselves creative types they're starting to like meander into this weird world of creation I don't know I'm finding it very fascinating <laughs> I'm checking to see if I still have this uh oh domain that's not mine yeah I don't sounds like yeah. something you might be able to get back though somebody else own it I don't know I didn't get that far I, I'm just I'm closing windows now. I, <laughs> I'm just turning off the monitor is what I'm doing. Boom. Can't be distracted when the monitor is off. Maybe we shouldn't do this thing on computers. I'm having trouble focusing in the last few episodes. <laughs> like perhaps sure, I could just uh, step outside and holler at a pine tree or something and you could <laughs> do something with that. I mean we could we could we could uh we could all meet in person. The central yeah. location every week. What would be the most central location to us, I wonder? Oh, you know, St. Louis probably isn't far from it. There should be a bot that can determine what the Oddly most central enough. location is. Based I'm on, on making note of that. Based on different <laughs> starting points. <laughs> My partner, um, I think it's still up, called Midpoint Meetup, but it's only between two points. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's still up because I know Google changed their rules. But um Yeah, Google's the worst. Yeah. That's why my guac Was it was it an app? No, it was well I guess it's like 
an app on a web page. I don't know how he constructed it, to be honest. <laughs> SPA. I just, I just used it to figure out places to go for coffee dates between two people. <laughs> Damn, that's rad. Turn it off the monitor again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of one of my um, one of my friends and coworkers uh, wrote a unfinished um, script that would uh, give you the weather report based on a, your trip. So, like, you're going like so, like if I'm going from you know, Tacoma, Washington to Utah in the winter. And I want to know what the weather's going to be like when we go through certain parts, certain areas on that trip. Uh, it would, um, it would show like it would have, it would link hook into dark sky and give a forecast for each of the, for like various different points along your, along your route. Dark sky and apple.com property. Yes. Yes. Um, that was a long time ago too. Uh, probably doesn't work anymore. And uh, one thing that he said that it didn't do was calculate like, um, how long like each section of the trip would take. Um, so it didn't oh. necessarily, it didn't necessarily like give you like the afternoons forecast for a particular area based on travel time, um, which would be like, I mean, it's honestly like for what it would do and for when we would use it, it doesn't really matter that much, but it kind of does. Um, Cause you kind of want to know if it's going to be snowing, if you're going through the mountains, that sort of thing. Um, so somebody needs to write that app. Uh, Cause I will, I'll pay money for that. Binary Jazz listeners, you heard it first. Add it to the list of Chris. Chris will pay money that for Chris an will app. pay money for. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I will pay money for waffles. So <laughs> if you're in either one of these camps, <laughs> these waffles or bots. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, well, so waffles or bots sounds like a bot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> waffles or bots. Uh, <laughs> That's That'll the, be my next that, quiz. Yeah, that's that's the next one. Waffle <laughs> or bot? Um, yeah, and since the coronavirus is over, uh, we don't need to worry about even getting waffles anymore. Right. It's officially huh? it's officially done. Is it? Well, sure. I mean, cases went down a little bit, and now we're done. Oh, I've we're done forever. Boarding. It's over. We're gonna open everything back up, and I hope we're fine. not done forever. It's a little morbid. Um, I've been avoiding the news this week. I had uh, three days off, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know why I felt the need to say that since it's Thursday. Like, what other possible days could I have had off? <laughs> <laughs> you start naming days that we don't know about. We're like, what? <laughs> Gary's week is 10 days long. <laughs> <laughs> and Blur's Day, Blur's Day, and Blur's Day off. Uh, Mirison, Grisson, Wilson, Conson, Folson, Ulyson, and Delayson. It sounds like Allison could be a day then. <laughs> uh, Topic? Sure. The Water Davian calendar has 10 days in a week. <laughs> Just wanted to throw that out there. That's <laughs> <sighs> oh, how I deal with reality. It's by not dealing with reality. I think that's that's not um, that's not that rare. I think a lot of people are joining you on that bandwagon. I, I've been avoiding like like beside other than this, I've been avoiding and and like like required meetings. I haven't been going to like the optional like hangout things very much. Like I just I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. Yep. 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 Ellen, you don't need to want to hang out either. Like. Yep. I feel like it's the opposite of like, like you're you're cooped up inside and you're not getting human contact, and so, like, what am I doing? I'm I'm reclining and re like sinking back further into this shell. Right. Hmm. I couldn't get any further back in my shell, so I'm just <laughs> hanging out like <laughs> as per usual. Once a week, you kind of like poke your head out a little bit. Yeah, I'm like, grocery? Then... <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything's still awful. Cool. I'll get food and disappear again. What's your favorite thing to get for groceries now? Is there anything weird that you're adding to the mix? 
I was panicked when I saw that we were the local grocery store was out of crits when this whole thing started because crits is like a pretty good indicator of how people are stuck locally. Um, no, but like crits. aside from aside from like panic mode, like the thing that you're like buying that you wouldn't oh. maybe normally buy. Cottage cheese. <laughs> That's interesting. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> apparently I turned 85. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> I feel like I'm buying ice cream. We don't normally buy ice cream, but for some reason I'm like, we need ice cream. We need ice cream on hand all the time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I don't know that I don't know that I have anything like that. Rhonda um, was in North Carolina just in her, her sister visiting her sister. She's up with her mom, but staying with her sisters. And I don't know what has anything to do with anything. There's a grocery store near her that, um, on St. Patrick's Day, had Guinness potato chips. Um, so they came back in March, and I'm like, we need a lot more of these. <laughs> so we now have two more bags of Guinness potato chips, which will probably last until Saturday. Okay. I was going to say, I was just like, please don't say, like, October. <laughs> no. No, they're good. They're good. I'm not like a big Guinness beer guy, but I don't know. It tastes like the Guinness flavor. It tastes appropriate and nice on potato chips. I'm not a potato chip guy either. But it's the perfect marriage of flavors for you. Yeah. Guinness potato chips and cottage cheese. Like that's that's where I'm going. That's what I'm doing for lunch today. Might throw some uh garlic salt on and uh maybe uh some tomatoes and some cucumber pieces. I know, it's I it's Put it all on top of a on a waffle and <laughs> Oh man, you got a, you got a feast right there. <laughs> I think I for new for new listeners, that's not a small child crying for help. It's a cat. <laughs> Scary soul, <laughs> tormented, or stomach maybe. I don't know. Okay, so we do have a topic. I'm sure. I'm positive. We, we do. It's. I feel like it's lackluster, if I'm going to be honest. It's not our best. It's not my best work. Um, <laughs> uh, Stentorian. Stentorian. Oh. You said, oh, like you knew what it was, but... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, I don't know. That's this that is. thing. Um, Stentorian. Well, a stent is a thing you put into a heart, uh, or not a heart, into a... Uh, what do you call those things? Not capillary, is the other ones. Vein? I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Artery. 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 <laughs> Artery. Not only do I perform back alley rocket launches, but I install, which is probably not the right word, heart stents. A stentorian is one who installs heart stents. Stentorian. Dr. Kilbar. Yeah. Yep. Stentorian. Or one who graduated from uh, Stentoria. So I'm 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 spelling that S T E N T. O R I A N. Yep. That is correct. Okay. Stentorian. Perfect. Uh, so it could be it could be the person who uh, installs stents. <laughs> I mean, duh. Or or uh, it could be a a room or a building that houses stents it's a stentorian that's just a stentorium <laughs> yeah. well yeah um do you want to hear my stupid first thought that i almost said and embarrass myself yes you do yeah of course I'm the show is all about that's really what the said, show is all about oh man it's so dumb i almost said oh yes and it's gonna be a spit take if i time it right ah oh, damn it i noticed and it was took too long to say nope. a stentorian is um what you call a stenographer which is obviously fault because you st call a stenographer a stenographer. <laughs> so that was what I almost <laughs> said and stopped myself and thought that could be the dumbest thing I've said here. Or maybe it's, it's when probably not. <laughs> maybe with, it's when you're a st stenographer, but it's like next level. Like you have like your PhD or something. Like. <laughs> Speaking of something that has something at all related to do with this show, uh, the Tyson. Uh, the Tyson uh, warehouse oh, no. in, uh, I guess, Arkansas? Um, Rancho maybe. Cucamonga. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. Not in Rancho Cucamonga. I've been to Rancho Love Cucamonga. that. Love that oh. name. Uh, no, it's in. 
You said Arkansas. No, I can't remember now, but it, had, it did have a stupid name. Anyway, they uh, they had to close. Awesome. Uh, they they do like three point something or other percent of the nation's pork output. Uh, they had to close because of an outbreak of COVID. So no more Dyson spheres because the Dyson production facility, which is actually the Tyson production factory, mm-hmm. is closed. Yeah. That was the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, Tyson's closing. That means there's no Dyson spheres. No more Dyson spheres. <laughs> well, but it's really the, uh, like the whole supply line is the problem, you know? I mean, the, the demand hasn't changed, but people are, are, are looking for, you know, retail Dyson spheres as opposed to the kind you can buy, you know, uh, at a restaurant, which is through a whole clamoring system. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another, obviously that's another binary invention that should never exist is a restaurant that, that serves Dyson spheres. What would you call it? Oh my gosh. I bet we would think of a wonderful name. What would you call this place? You would call it planetary um, meats. Gross. Okay, I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> I think it's too early for me to have this discussion. And 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 the best part is on the menu is going to be a turducken Dyson sphere. Yeah, I picture them on like large spits over a big fire. Oh yeah, that's probably the best way to cook them. Yeah. To make sure that it gets yeah. cooked all the way. Yeah. yeah. The well, outer spits just, we should obviously layers. outlaw at this point to event to prevent you know transmission yeah. of. Yeah, sure. disease. But everything's fine. Just, everything's fine. And we'll be going to those restaurants next week. Um, I always go to steakhouses after pandemic. Yeah. I <laughs> Seems like I the say, safest possible thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, the, the, our, our local zoo. Rare. Uh, our local zoo is running out of money, like probably everyone's is. Um, and they yeah. apparently um, were requesting assistance um, because they, at some point very soon, are going to be unable to feed the animals. And my first thought, my first thought was, well, they just need to stake out the Walmart parking lot and get all those, all those meats that Walmart is just dumping into the dumpster, just like th- on Tiger King. I, I was, um, first, yes. Surely Second, that's the best answer. I feel like there is um, a built-in food supply, at least naturally in a zoo, that some of this can take care of itself. Right? Like, oh, we can't, we can't feed the lions. That's not you want to encourage, Gary. That's These not exactly true. want to be protected. Can... Someone's like, look, I left this pen open, and now, now the leopard remember... is dead. What am, I, what am I supposed to do? Do you remember how we couldn't figure out how we can be able to afford to feed the lions and the flamingos? Well, I have good news. <laughs> we don't have to worry about feeding the flamingos anymore, and the lions are full. Oh, what the flamingos ever do to you? Yeah, although <laughs> come... that's, that's a very... That would solve the problem for like maybe a week, and then you'd like then you'd have all the like uh, apex predators, yeah. another uh, binary jazz oh. topic. You'd have all the a- see pulling it back. All the apex predators would be it'd be the apex predator zoo. And just all the apex predators, none of the uh, none of the prey because they'd all already be eaten, and then that would zoo would just be basically uh, Tiger King. Or What's the word today? you centaur uh, Tiger King. <laughs> Centurion. Or what if you release the lions or leopards and the flamingos, and then all of a sudden it's not chaos, but they become friends, and you disrupt the natural order of things? That uh, well, that's the you're Disney need to hire some more zookeepers. That, it turns uh, out. that scenario. I uh, but really, we were just we just had differences of opinion, and now we're fine. <laughs> what if I they have, don't like? I have pink no things. desire to eat you. It turns out all we needed was a pandemic to, you know, bring all the together. all the animals yeah. together, natural <laughs> en- enemies. Yeah, I am not sure that this is going to work. I don't know. It's a this depressing in what context? I this whole human experiment thing that we're part of. I you know what I keep thinking? We're too global, <laughs> too too heavy. Sorry. You, you know what I keep thinking? <laughs> um. I keep thinking about the stand. Mm-hmm. Stephen King's The Stand, mm-hmm. which I read mm-hmm. when I was like, I don't know, 15 maybe. It's a really stupidly long book and it's probably way more book than anyone needs and definitely way more book than anyone needs right now. But I keep thinking of The Stand because it starts out like half the book is about a pandemic 
uh, and then the other half is about like uh, struggle between good versus evil and ancient uh, entities that are like basically controlling people or whatever. That's, that's a, that, that part's boring. Um, so like there's a whole section of the book about like what happens to infrastructure when there's a pandemic that we have no cure for, we don't, we don't prepare for it and everything's out of control and, um, and like a, a large chunk of the population just dies. Uh, and I've been thinking about that and similarities between that and the real world and thinking that that's, I mean, I mean that's just one example of many, many examples in, 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 uh, in pop culture that are about the same subject. The Sand is definitely not the best one uh, and definitely not the only one, um, but uh, it's the one that, that is occurring to me currently. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just every, every time something happens, I, I always I like think about, oh, that happened in The Stand. And I'm just waiting for a man in black to be wandering, wandering along the freeways, like walking these empty, fruit, desolate freeways, gathering followers, and then creating basically like some sort of uh, conference, essentially, of, of his evildoers in Las Vegas, the, the, the ruins of Las Vegas. That's, that's what I'm waiting for. Um, I wonder if I could drop my cat off at the zoo. <laughs> off the food issue. Number two, um, how pissed are you if you're like, writing, you were like writing a novel, like say back in like, you know, November, December about like about something similar to this. Yeah. And then this happens and you're like, how, how is the real world like more outlandish and creative than I could ever be? I, I'm going to, I'm because waiting, shit. I'm waiting like two years from now when, when, when we're actually done, uh, there's going to be like, you know how like there's, there's always a, a cycle of like, you know, like we get all sorts of disaster movies all at once and they're all really similar sorts of disaster movies. We're going to have like five yeah. pandemic movies in like Armageddon Deep Impact yeah. after the asteroid famously hit Earth in 1995. <laughs> we're, we're I mean, and yeah, so we're definitely going to have some some pandemic movies in, in, two, in 2022. Yeah. If you were going to yeah. live in a Stephen King novel though, which one would you choose? If I was going to live in a Stephen King novel? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Well, that's what you described. I know. Do you, do I, I you, don't want to live in any of them. Jesus. Did you ever read? Did you ever read the Bachman books? His like short series of st short stories he wrote yeah. under a pseudonym. Yeah. So the one that I would want to live in in that is the Long Walk, which is over oh, like hundred. Every God. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would have control over when it's done. That's the beautiful part. That's probably like that rare thing in a Stephen King novel. Where you could do like, "Fuck this, I'm out." I, don't I was going to choose Stephen the King story that Stand By Me was based on. I was like, maybe that's like kind of like nostalgic and like sad. Yeah, so my lunch, my lunch is now um, Guinness potato chips, cottage cheese, some tomatoes, some cucumbers, and two large beers. <laughs> so we're driving you to the drink is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, just the recognition of the world as it stands is, is kind of done that. Maybe next episode we'll have a pandemic-free discussion. I, I don't think we need to do that. I think it's just unlikely. I think as a, I mean, it would be cool, but I think just as a reality of like, what's, you know? I recently uh, purchased a impossible. PDF copy of a D&D campaign isolated. or adventure that was about a pandemic. Um, that was written, that was written in response to uh, the coronavirus. Like it was yeah. intentional. It was basically the, the idea that I had just impl just executed it slightly different, yeah. which is so, why I got it. Stentorian. Centaurian. Yeah. Centaurian yeah. is, is, is a person who stents. I, I actually think... An expert um, stenter. Uh, I actually think it was a, uh, the, a job in a typesetter's office. Well, obviously, st setting all the stents. The Centaurian does that. Right. I don't know what the it has to do with line height type. because nobody understands it. <laughs> that seems very likely because I... Don't understand line height, so. Yep. Height of the line. What are you talking about? The height of a line. <laughs> what line? Where? Starting from where? Lines have length, not height. <laughs> anyway. Um, is this the moment of the reveal? Probably. Probably. Can um, it be dramatic today? Yes. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, stentorian means booming or loud voiced. Oh, right. I had to, so like the dad voice that I have to use on occasion. 
Yeah, it's, it's a very a stentorian. It's a stentorian. Poem. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it's a description right. of something that is completely unrelated to uh, what we were talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it originates from Greek mythology. There was someone named Stentor. Um, Stentor. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. my new barbarian. That's, so, that's my oh new my D &D gosh, barbarian. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who was a herald during the Trojan War, and he's mentioned in the Iliad. Um, it's something like whose voice was as powerful as 50 men or something like that. Yes, um, wow. definitely, That's definitely. Cool. Well, barbarian or maybe bard. Maybe. Maybe bard, because because he can he is because his voice is the thing that that uh, that uh, has his that he influences change with. Yeah, and then there's something else that I found that said that he is said to have died in a shouting match with with oh it doesn't say with a god Gary's cat. Now <laughs> now it's back to now it's back to barbarian. Maybe maybe yeah. a barbarian bard, but but probably barbarian. If he's getting into shouting matches, uh, then definitely like yeah. That's, that's my name. I have a neighbor that's centaur. particularly centaurian, so. <laughs> I, I mean, I occasionally get accidentally centaurian if I'm really excited about something. Yeah. Booming with 50 voices. I love that. I will forget this word promptly. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm here for. But at some point, you'll be in like a pub quiz and there'll be some sort of Greek mythology thing and maybe it'll come up. <laughs> and someone will, like, someone will be like, you know, what does the word mean? I'll be like, I don't know, but Gosh, no, but... these uh, Guinness potato chips are fantastic, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh. And I don't think I have any other Allison questions for today. Which is why we need user questions. This is why we need user questions. So please ask us your questions. No question is too silly. No question is too personal. Well, that's probably, probably not true. I mean, give whether a, or not we answer try. them in in an, a way oh. that is <laughs> appropriate is a different thing so is there a question that exists that the um i'm sure there is what uh, what would you call a question that when asked like the person's reaction to the question is a sufficient enough answer that the, they then do not need to answer the question is there a word for that wait i'm not sure i follow like you mean an their response without actually answering like, like if you have like an indignant response, like I'm not answering that, like that's still a response, obviously, oh. right? But I feel like there are questions you could ask and get an answer without the person answering, like their body language would immediately be an answer. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what that question would be, but. I think they call that inappropriate. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's that, but there's, but there are also inappropriate questions, that, questions that don't solicit that kind of response. So I think that's there must true. be um a genre yeah. of questions perhaps is that what you're like well you know i like to stick everything in a taxonomy so that's true yeah <laughs> yeah a genre of questions that uh that elicits a specific so you're grouping you're grouping questions by the responses they get it's an um, interesting it's well an interesting it would be taxonomy. Under, under inappropriate right under inappropriate question there would be a new subcategory that in addition to being inappropriate, would it elicit a visceral physical response and no verbal answer? Well, but see, you, that's really long, so we need a shorter word. Like, it seems like you could ask a appropriate question that would get a similar response that would also be equally nonverbal. Like, so then there's two subcategories of nonverbal. Yeah, Responses. I mean, in this case, I'm thinking specifically inappropriate, so. Specifically inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Is, I has know. there ever been anything that you can't categorize? <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, or does it frustrate you until you can categorize it? I just think it's, I don't know that there's like a frustration factor. I think it's just the way I, I understand the world. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like there's like always a large category, like everything is the, like the, the category. And then it breaks down from there, you know? Like, um, I used, when I worked at this um, uh, battery company downtown, um, I was talking to the sales guy at the counter. He was a really smart guy, but like, 
um, like deep alcoholic. Um, like he could have done a lot more of his life, but hit this point where he was happy. He was like, I saw batteries every day. I work eight to five, you know, every other Saturday. And it's, it's my gig. And I can go home and get like, you know, blistering drunk and come back and do my job the next day. Um, I mean, like had great memory for battery costs, the ability to figure out, you know, where he could go and still hit a decent profit margin with a customer that he needed to negotiate with, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so we were talking one time and I was, I was describing the reasoning behind a pricing decision I had made on some bulk product I was selling. And he said uh, that I would be very good at, uh, oh, he asked if I'd ever studied metaphysics. And I'm like, no idea. What's that? <laughs> and he described it. And the way he described it is entirely different than what Wikipedia describes it as. So I'm not sure if it was actually the same, I mean, it was roughly the same definition, but very clearly approached from a different side. Anyway, um, that's it. That's the story of Randy, uh, who died um, of like a massive heart attack one weekend. And um, like he was, because he wasn't at the uh, local Moose Lodge, um, like some way like sent out like a welfare check and the police found him at his house. This story took a much darker turn than I anticipated. Uh, well, I mean, it's sort of, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. So it was a rough couple of years at that place for people. Glad I'm not there because like that, that level of middle management, people are dropping like flies, you know? So. Yeah. That doesn't sound so great. Yeah. But I'm not there. I'm also not dead. It's near as I can tell. Maybe I am. Pretty sure maybe, not. Yeah, maybe your purgatory is this podcast. I think it's bigger than just <laughs> this. I don't mean you're part of my purgatory. I kid. I'm happy to see you all weekly. I'm I'm imagining a purgatory that is just this or really any podcast. Like, I was actually thinking it was more it like like your purgatory is being you. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, uh, what, um, we talked about like food, what food are you consuming more of now during the pandemic? Like what is, uh, what is your new, um, I like going to the grocery store used to be like, I grab the keys and my wallet and run out the door, I, you know, throw on sandals, no matter what the temperature was. Um, like what's your, like getting ready to go to the grocery store routine like these days? Uh, grab the mask before you leave the house. Yeah, for sure. Um, Here's, here's, so here's my weird one. Like I said, I mean, that's the thing it's added. <laughs> yeah. So make sure that the car has a, a, a alcohol gel thing. Oh yeah. 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 I always feel weird. Like when I, after I've gone shopping and I unload the bags then I'm like, well, I have to open the car door with my hands somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. So I find that I use, like, I try to use a finger that I don't usually use on my left hand. So my ring finger. And then I try to very carefully with my right hand so I don't spill it, open the hand sanitizer, right? And sanitize. But then I start thinking about like, well, what do I do with the bags? Because I was handling the bags. And then this like whole paranoia sets in for the entire duration of the trip home. And then I fall into cottage cheese, Guinness chips and beer. I don't know. I don't the, have the thing, the thing that is, point. The thing is that you, don't, you, you have to just like... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter. We'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.